Dennis Seaver's house in Spitalfields is a time capsule, portraying the lives of a fictitious family of Huguenot silk weavers from 1724 to the start of the 20th century. My name's David Milne. I'm the curator of Dennis Seaver's house. 18th century silk merchant house in Spitalfields, literally 10 minutes walk from Liverpool Street Station. This house was built 300 years ago during speculation for the new immigrant classes of the Huguenots that came here. So the Huguenots arrived in the late 17th century from France in exile. So they were given free passage to come and settle in this area. And over a period of 100 years, they made Spitalfields one of the wealthiest and powerful um, silk districts in all the world. Dennis Seavers bought this house in the 1970s, saved it from demolition, and then people came to see how this young 30-year-old chap from California was living in this extraordinary way. Completely lit by candlelight, heated by open fires, furnished with period fittings, and then he began to create and tell a story of the people that would have once lived within this house and these streets. Every person that has lived and occupied a chamber or a space within the house for the last three centuries, when they had some money, they altered it. As Dennis traveled through the house, he began this gradual discovery of additions and people's lost lives, the ghost of them, was still here. So that became a basis for a story that takes you from the early 18th century into the late 19th century. Each chamber relates to a period, so all the collections are slightly different. In the early chambers, things are very simple. When you get into the 19th century, things are made by machines because it's an age of industry. Everything you see behind me, this is all Chinese export. This overmantel is based on the designs of Daniel Merritt, who was cabinet maker to the king, taken from an illustration from one of his catalogues. If you couldn't afford them, you could get an image and get a local craftsman to make it for you. Every single piece you see behind me is stacked up individually, and every single piece comes off to be washed and put back in its individual space, so that in 100 years, this room will still look like this. One of the things that makes this house stand out from many others is not how it's built, the things that are within it, but actually the way that they are within it. Everything's living and everything's telling a story because this house was created by a man who lived here. He's only been dead for a few years now. Your experience in the house, of course, is, is so unique. When you're here, everybody else around you is silent and they don't interrupt your own experience. There's nobody to lead you through. There's very little information and we have a sound installation you find the story yourself. And in every chamber, there's a tiny little note reminding you of the person you might be looking at. It might be a shoe tossed on the floor. It might be a, a gown lying across a bed. It might be a wig just hanging on the wig stand. But you look at the painting and see the people of the stories that's unfolding before you. Every chamber you walk into, someone's either just got out of bed, they just left a table, they're in the kitchen baking, they're having a drink so that our visitors are completely spellbound. The evidence of daily life is as real as it's ever going to be.